Plastic surgery fixes the things that make us human, uh, which is especially important in pediatric plastic surgery because kids are developing humans. They need to look normal, sound normal, use their hands normally to be able to develop. So obviously, what makes us human is how we look, and so everything about human appearance is covered by that statement. But when we talk about speech or how the cleft palate or the palate works, uh, speech is about the most human thing I can think of. So fixing things that make us human include how we look, how we talk, which is cleft palate surgery, and other surgery in the intraoral area, in the mouth area, and also hand surgery. I can't think of anything more human than using your hands to communicate, to touch each other, uh, to build objects, things that only humans do. And compared to adults, uh, kids don't have an identity yet. So if they look strange, they sound strange, they can't play with other kids with their hands, uh, they have nothing to fall back on, and so uh, they'll lose uh, faith in themselves. So plastic surgery may be aesthetic for certain adults, but in a kid, I think it's essential because a kid needs these things to develop normally as a human being. Plastic surgeons can also specialize in craniofacial surgery. Craniofacial literally means the cranium, which is the head, and face, which is the face. Uh, and so it means this whole entire area, not just the soft tissues, but also the cartilage of the ears, the nose, uh, the lips, the orbits, the s and then the bones of the skull, the bones of the bones around the eyes, bones of the cheeks and the jaws. And this area can be uh, improved on or fixed through both soft tissue and bone techniques. Kids unfortunately break these bones all the time and we have to use plates and screws uh, to fix and move these bones in the right place so they can chew normally, breathe normally, see normally, and look normal. Um, nowadays with kids, we have a lot of modern technologies. For example, instead of titanium plates and screws, we can use resorbable plates and screws. They're made of a plastic that the body slowly digests, just like stitches that are resorbable. That way that hardware is not permanent for these kids, which is great in a kid who's growing. One way to think about craniomaxillofacial facial surgery or craniofacial surgery is our craniofacial skeleton can be divided into the top third, middle third, and bottom third. The top third, the most common thing we take care of is called craniosynostosis. That means kids who are born with their skulls fused. And when they're uh, somewhere from three to nine months of age, we'll do surgery where we cut the bones off the uh, skull and the bones off the eyes and reshape and reconstruct them so these kids have more space for their brain and their eyes for development and to look normal as well. Um, these, uh, again, are use, we use resorbable plates and screws to put the bones in a new position. For the mid-face, these include the bones around the orbits, the bones of the upper jaw. Kids can have uh, eyes that stick out too much and we can move the bones of the eyes to protect the eyes, or kids can break these areas. Kids can have overbites or underbites when we cut and move the jaw. And for the lower jaw, uh, kids can break this, or some babies are born with the lower jaw so small they can't breathe because the lower jaw is so small the tongue gets stuck in the back. In the old days, these kids would get tracheostomies, but since the late 80s, early 90s, plastic surgeons have invented cutting and moving the lower jaw, and not only do they look more normal, they don't need a tracheostomy anymore. And, like we talked about, the cleft palate that we fix is for speech, and plastic surgeons are experts at the rest, soft tissue of the rest of the body, so not just the hands and the extremities, but also the breasts, the abdomens, uh, and the trunk. And so we cover really the patient from head to toe.